Hello, and welcome back to Vermont Scale Customs. Thanks for stopping by the channel. So, um, obviously the title probably has brought you here. Um, unless you, you know, are a regular and you're just checking out the video. But <clears throat> basically what I am going to do today is something I've been wanting to do for a while. And that is um, build the... Uh, DOS Hex uh, Z2 or the DOS Micro Z2 on to the Fury Tech uh, Scythe V2 chassis uh, in carbon fiber. Now I have had this uh, for about uh, two months or so, maybe, maybe even a little bit longer than that. Uh, and I have been desperately trying to get it to run how I would expect it to run. It still doesn't have dig set up or anything like that, but I finally uh, have it on 3S with the proper uh, ESC with dual motor outputs running on it. Um, and now that I'm uh, pleased with the performance of the mechanical performance of it and everything else, uh, it's time now to switch it over, I think, to this chassis. Um, and I'm doing so for a couple different reasons. One, because I do like the looks of this. And number two, I've never really seen um, an MOA done with the scythe. Um, another big factor would be just kind of wire management here with everything. Um, not very appealing in any way and really difficult to hide stuff. Um, has body mounts and has a body on it. But now with the battery being mounted up front, and not here in this particular location. That changes everything with mobility up front. Um, I put the pin comp tires back on it. That also affects articulation with uh, the front end of the uh, of the buggy body that, that, that comes factory on this. As well, I'm not really happy with the lack of adjustability for the frame. I would like to have maybe just a few bit, a few more uh, locations for shock towers and stuff like that to be able to, to, uh, to kind of fine tune this a little bit better. And uh, what else? Yeah, kind of not real happy with uh, like this right here, like you have no use for these particular uh, nubs that are coming out of the frame rails, basically right there. You can't actually relocate these this, this position here from uh, the top of the links to here. Uh, so I think I just kind of decided that after doing uh, what I did yesterday was to install the 3S and the new ESC and it performs the way that it should. Uh, it's now ready to go on to this guy and become an actual MOA. So, <clears throat> well, it's already an actual MOA. I just mean the way that I had intended to want to do this originally. Um, I bought this chassis probably about the same time that I bought the, uh, the Z2. Uh, it's just that when this arrived, it didn't really have the potential to or or justify, you know, it just wasn't running nearly as well as what it should in order to, to make sense to get it built up on this thing. And so now that I've kind of solved all of those problems and issues, uh, it's ready to, to be mounted on to on this thing. So first things first, I got to tear this down. I need to drill all of these holes out because the hardware is uh, a little bit larger than what comes with the SEX24 stuff. I need to drill out all the bottom holes where the skid plate would mount. And I'm gonna utilize those for any uh, link top, you know, the rear part of the link adjustment since both uh, parts of the link actually adjust or uh, snap to that. Those need to be rounded out and I'm gonna make as many adjustable holes as possible for that. And as well, I've got a ton of drilling here to do up front too for the front shocks. So it's going to be quite a bit of drilling before I actually get to uh, doing anything with this. So first things first, I'm going to tear this down so I don't damage anything else in the process. And I don't drill into this tray in the back once I'm drilling into the side here. So I will not bore you with all of that. I will speed up and, and go 20 times faster all through those parts. And uh, anyway, I'll see you in a minute.
circles. There it is, it's ready to be built. So the battery is now gonna fit right on top of here, which I should be able to, if I need to, I should just be able to like plug in outside of that and then slide in some way or be able to try and plug it in and then set the, the plug to the inside of it because uh, the board that comes, uh, the new ESC board has the, the power switch leads actually on the board soldered uh, together. You just you know, drop a solder across there, there's no actual uh, power switch on that one and I don't have a desoldering uh, tool uh, to be able to solder a power switch back on there so anyway but this is all drilled out now um, I'm gonna stop the camera for a second and uh, take a little breather because uh, I'm gonna clean up this mess and then I will get back to it uh, next phase basically is now going to be tearing down the Z2 in preparation for switching everything over to this so stay tuned okay back after a short break and a little cleanup. So, um, chassis has been drilled out. That actually went really well. Um, no major problems. I did kind of scuff it a little bit when I was filing uh, on the exterior, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure you really notice it too much. Maybe in certain lights you will or something like that. Certain, certain ways you're looking at it, however, but I just didn't want those hard rough edges or anything like that. Carbon fiber, you know, kind of produces some some splinters that can get into your skin and stuff like that. So I just didn't want, I just wanted to knock those edges down a little bit. So, um, didn't run into any problems at all. Uh, thankfully when drilling everything out and I've also got the front tray mounted so I can use that for the battery tray whenever that's all set. So now, uh, phase two is here. This is where I, um, take everything apart off of this. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, I'll probably just speed this part up as well and just sort of either maybe talk a little bit. Uh, maybe I can do that right off the bat here. I'll sort of tell you a little bit about why I kind of wanted to do this initially. So um, I've now said it a couple times in the video, there really hadn't existed um, a Scythe MOA rig yet. And I wanted to see if that was something that I could do once I kind of saw like the potential from, from, I guess, a couple different angles. And so, uh, it just made sense to me to give it a shot and see if there was anything I could do. So, um, I decided to start looking at, uh, these Z twos to see if there was, you know, any potential that this could work. And I also looked at the, uh, uh, gosh, what is it called? The the Rocksta Basher, which is actually a really good crawler. A lot of people totally swear by that thing. Um, they absolutely love it. And uh, but I just didn't see the potential uh, in switching that over. Plus, I think at the time I was looking at it, there was only just a couple left here in the United States. And before I knew it, they were gone. And I can't recall, but I think you might have to now like wait uh, a little while if you're trying to order one of those from like the UK. I think there's still a few left over there. Um, and so I looked too at this uh, DOS X or DOS Micro, whichever one you want to call it, um, and was looking at it actually at AliExpress is where I think I first initially saw it. And kind of thought to myself, well, it'd be kind of cool to get into something that, that not a lot of people have. So I took the time to search on YouTube to see if I could see anybody uh, posted any videos or anything like that. And I saw a couple, uh, like 2FMRC, um, and he had, you know, some both good and bad things to say about the whole setup and stuff like that. Um, he bought actually the kit and built it, and it didn't come with instructions. So... Uh, he said it was rather problematic. So I decided actually kind of based upon that, that I would just go ahead and buy the RTR because I thought the RTR would come with basically everything that it needed, including um, setting up like dig function and stuff like that. Like the controller would be pretty, pretty much, you know, fully well-rounded, ready to go. Um, however, unfortunately such was not the case. It showed up 
with uh, one of these very generic ESCs, and I'll show you one here in just a second, or if not, I'll show you the exact ESC. This is these little red ESCs that, uh, they claim these are 20 amp, but I, I really would struggle to to say that these are any more than, you know, like maybe five or 10, I don't, I don't know. Um, unless these are, are five amp output chips and they call this a 20, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but needless to say, uh, I could not get this thing to not stop stalling, both front and rear axle, uh, and it just wasn't running properly at all. It just was not having any kind of good luck with it. And so it was sort of bumming me out a little bit. It took uh, a couple months. It took about four different ESCs uh, to finally find the right combination of making sure everything was gonna work okay. And uh, so I communicated with the one guy uh, on YouTube that does have one of these that is making it run like it's supposed to. He's got it set up with DIG and everything else. And he basically recommended getting this ESC, which I finally found at, uh, found it at Amazon. Because I, I found the, the, the regular dual motor one that had half of the amount of output current. I found that at AliExpress. Probably should have cut that off of there when I did. That's a great. Probably. I'm not sure if I have enough zip ties. I have just a very limited amount of zip ties left, so I'm going to try and make those last, but I don't know how well it's gonna go. Okay. Maybe not. Oh my God, how perfect is that? Oh my gosh. <sighs> it's that point where you start to get a little excited about your build and you're just like, oh, I think this is gonna be cool because I think I just got a little excited about this build and I think it's gonna be cool. I, I might be wrong, but it could be percent correct. Really glad the servo is w way up front and out of the way. I was not sure if that was going to miss the front end of this thing, but clearly it is not even anywhere close. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's a Fury Tech Scythe built up with the Das Hex Z2. We are in roller roller form right now. The wheelbase is huge. I don't even know what to think about that. Um, I'm gonna take another short break here and I'll be right back, folks. Okay, what's up? Um, I kind of started doing a bunch of wiring and everything and sort of kind of realized and I was like, hey, wait a minute. I'm actually trying to film a video about building this thing, so maybe I should turn the camera back on. Uh, so, uh, battery has been basically put in place, strapped down, ESC is on the underside of the roof, and the radio has gone in, uh, right in front of the rear axle cross member here. I was going to put the electronics all the way out at the back, but for whatever reason it just didn't make sense, and then suddenly I looked at this and realized that I had put the ESC on the underside of the roof of this, and just went through the you know, the hassle of just kind of trying to tuck all the wiring in as best as I possibly could. Um, 
the battery never comes out of uh, this rig and I just unplug it from the ESC whenever I'm charging and I've not had uh, any problems or anything. So anyway, um, with this one, it's pretty much going to have to be the same thing. I think I'll try to get it out of here. Um, I may have to undo the two screws on the side, and pop the roof open if I have any problems trying to charge it, but I'll try anything once. Who knows? Maybe I'll just try and get my charger hitched up to the, the underside of this thing. So anyway, while the camera's on, I am just going to try and finish tucking in some of this wiring and get this thing a little bit closer to, to complete. It's, it's very close. In fact, um, I just need to get this servo wire through here. If I can find a route and I might have to move that thing for a minute. So I just zip tied a couple of uh, loops back and forth with the servo wire and it's going to hide underneath. I'm not really too concerned about what the wiring looks like underneath on this thing. I mean, I am. It's going to look neat, but it's just going to be kind of packed in here in such a way that it all sort of, uh, yeah, it's just kind of held either in place by a bend you know, probably placed against something that holds it right there or uh, zip tied and held down. So um, this kind of wire you can fold a little bit and tuck in pretty neatly in places, which kind of works out pretty well. So it doesn't look too bad once it's ready. Uh, antenna wire. I was really hoping that this crawler was going to be what it's turning out to be. Um, I was a little concerned at the first, at, at first because it didn't perform in anywhere anywhere close to what I thought that it was going to. Um, in fact, I was kind of disappointed overall, like in just uh, what I was seeing in the performance. I was kind of kind of pretty disappointed, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but. I tried multiple different ESCs. I, I think first I might have tried like running an RC four wheel drive, uh, one of their dual uh, dual purpose uh, ESC slash uh, radio combos, and actually seemed to uh, you know experience better performance with with just that, and that really wasn't anything to speak of. Uh, it's still stalled out and so on and so forth. So um, we're still having problems, even, like I said, just despite having run that. So uh, needless to say, what I ended up then trying after that, I think, was uh, the Axial SEX24, the AE6 ESC, um, which actually, uh, like the RC four-wheel drive, gave it uh, what it needed for power, it seemed. Um, but at that point, um, it also had a little bit better low speed control. And uh, so I was kind of felt, you know, I think more confident about what I was seeing. And I was like, okay, well, you know, it, it seems like it might be a pretty decent rig to keep, you know, putting some effort into uh, to trying to get, you know, to where I think it should, should perform. Um, and so upon digging a little bit deeper, that is when I discovered that there is a micro dual output ESC that exists. Uh, and so the first one that I purchased was made for actually for 2S batteries, which was fine. Um, I did notice a little bit of a performance increase, I guess, so to speak. Nothing really too much to speak of, but enough uh, that I was like, okay, well, if this is good, it's certainly better, but I still wasn't convinced that it was ready to have the MO rate, you know, everything swapped over to the Scythe chassis here. Um, 
And so it wasn't until uh, I kept looking and finally found the uh, the the e excuse me yeah the ESC that has basically twice the output power, twice the current output current power as um, the one that I was running in here before, and so uh, that was readily available on Amazon, much to my surprise. And so upon ordering that and getting that thing in, I also ordered per recommendation of uh, a, U a YouTube user that also has a DOS Hex or a DOS Micro, uh, but he runs one of these and basically per re his recommendation, uh, ordered a 3S battery as well. So I knew that once those showed up, I, you know, I needed to get these, this stuff installed. And then uh, just double check its performance just to make sure that everything was going to run, you know, hopefully better. <laughs> and I could definitely say from what I experienced last night that it really, it is exactly what this thing needed. So um, after spending, I think I've gone through about two battery cycles on this thing now with it built up like this uh, from last night to today. And I've been very, very happy with, with how it's running. So uh, I decided, you know, of course, to go ahead and build everything into this chassis, which um, it's almost complete. I'm just now tucking the last motor lead in, the front motor. This really isn't the prettiest bunch of wire work I've ever done. But I think once it's all neatly placed inside of here, you really won't see too much of it or care. But uh, I really wanted to be sure that this thing was going to be running well enough before I put the time and energy into uh, not only building it up, but just having to modify this chassis. I knew that I needed to drill it out in order for it to really work uh, because the hardware for this is just slightly bigger than SCX24 stuff. So last night, well, I was kind of in between tinkering around with this and just sort of seeing how it ran. I, I went over to Amazon and I put everything into my shopping cart that I had had uh, sort of sitting there quietly, not doing anything for a while. And... I was kind of surprised at how much it was actually really going to be for me to purchase uh, everything and get it up and running if I were to do essentially a scratch build, uh, which I, I so desperately wanted to do, you know, if if I needed to, but I also didn't want to, I didn't want to have to spend the money if I didn't need to. So I was sort of pleased that this did end up performing as well as what it did um, because the total of all that stuff in the shopping cart was around 560 bucks and I you know I don't I don't mind throwing I guess that much money at a crawler but this is a one a 124 scale I've already put 200 into the chassis or excuse me the 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 original DAS DAS micro DAS hex DAS, uh, Z2 so to spend another 500 and some odd dollars to switch things to brushless and blah, 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 and build up another crawler and everything, I was like, you know what? I have this chassis sitting here for 55 bucks. So for quite literally a tenth of the cost and a couple of hours of time, I can get this thing built up finally the way I had originally intended it because it now runs how I had originally had hoped that it would. And here comes the moment of truth. I do need to look at the transmitter. Hopefully everything is still totally 100% functional. I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be. We've got juice. Oh boy. Wow. It's alive. It works, people. It's here. It's the 124. DOS Hex 
Z2 MOA. It really is finally together. I can't believe it. Pretty cool. Okay, well, you know, um, it, I'm impressed. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to take some pictures of this and show it to the guys on the old Facebook MOA crawler page. I think this is pretty cool. Um, that's gonna pretty much just about wrap it up. I'm gonna relocate this motor plug, probably cinch it down with a zip tie in the back here so that doesn't move around too much. It doesn't abrade against the uh, carbon fiber of the rail. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit of uh, management here with the power lead. And I'm going to call out a video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a really long one, um, but this has also been a pretty intense build um, with a pretty cool little crawler that you probably have never seen before. A couple of them, actually. Maybe a lot of you guys are familiar with the scythe, um, but you haven't seen it done in this particular way here, uh, built into an MOA rig. So um, thanks again so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Um, please feel free to hit that like button and ring that bell notification if you want to see more content like this or be notified when I upload it to YouTube. Um, thanks again. Take care out there and we'll see you on the next video. All right. Peace.